We're taking this entire RV off-grid right now with over 4,000 watts of solar input, and are gonna have over 32 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. We'll be able to run both air conditioners Everything inside, Wi-Fi, whatever they want to run is going to be no problem at all with this solar setup. If you want to see how we put it in, stay to the end of this video for a big surprise on how it works. I'm going to take you along with me on this so you can see just how you could take your RV off-grid as well. But the reason I say we're getting more than 4,000 watts is because these are bifacial solar panels. And bifacial means they have cells on the top and on the bottom. And because this racking system sits up off the RV and because the roof is white and there's all this ambient light around here reflecting onto the solar panels, we can get extra power off of the bottom of the solar panels in order to increase the total power going in. If you didn't know, power means watts. And we're out here in New Mexico, so it's a very, very sunny day and it's a very sunny area. It's one of the best areas for solar irradiance or for sunlight. So one of the first things we have to do is check the different angles of these two facets of the roof here and see what our drop is between the air conditioner and the side wall because all of the weight of this rack goes onto the side wall of the RV where the most strength is in the whole structure. One of the first things you have to do is get the total width measurement of the RV as well as the total length measurement and as well check if there are any obstructions such as vents or lights that are on the edge of the RV. You'll oftentimes find vents for your refrigerator right on the edges. Luckily in this RV there are no obstructions within about six to eight inches of the edge on both sides. It's going to make it really easy to put the base plates in. Now because this RV has a rounded roof we have to make sure that when we get our racking installed that it's above the air conditioners. So what we do is we take a level like a four foot six foot level or you can just get something like uh, some of the racking or any straight material. You want to put that level across the top of the highest object on the roof which is usually the air conditioner sometimes a satellite dish. Put that across the top and you're going to go all the way out to the outer edge and you're going to get the height difference between the bottom of that level and the edge of the RV. That way once you put the racking up the crossbars are right above your highest point on the roof. One of the most important things to determine is what angle these foot plates need to be. Now, this is part of the patent penting equipment that Monument Solar has invented and they have different angled feet. And so basically what we have to do is take a base plate, put it where we're going to be mounting it, and then take a small level and put it on this edge and see if it's level. In this case, this foot bracket is definitely too steep. So is this one, but this one looks really good. Just to be safe, let's check this one. And this one we can see is definitely pushing way out to the outer edge. So this foot bracket is gonna be the one that we're going to use. I've already checked this with the level to make sure that it's the right one. If anything, sometimes you will get to where this vertical piece is either sticking out slightly or sticking in slightly. And you want the one that's either straight up and down, or if you can't get one straight up and down, then slightly towards the outer edge. This base plate bracket here is what allows you to distribute all the weight of the solar panels onto the main structure of the RV because the roof is not structural. It really is not designed to hold a lot of weight and could collapse or have a catastrophic failure with this much weight on it. This is gonna allow us to sink all of the lags that go into the framing through here and then as well put that weight here. And it has these cutouts here on the end where we'll use some additional cabling to make sure we have a forward and backward support because when you're driving your RV around, you don't want your panels to just slough off the top because you don't have that extra strength. This has been over-engineered to make sure that it can go a million miles on the road. So the first thing that we're gonna do is get these T-posts onto the base plate, which goes to the very bottom part of the whole solar panel bracket. These are secured together very simply with self-tapping screws. Some people will opt to use bolts to go all the way through, but in this case, we're gonna follow the manufacturer's guide of just using these self-tapping screws. And while that's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the roof to make it ready for receiving the butyl tape that's gonna go underneath these base plates. All I'm doing is taking some alcohol and rags and cleaning off the space where those base plates are gonna be going. We don't want any dirt under here because we want as good of adhesion as possible to make sure it's 100% watertight. And we're gonna go ahead and dry fit these to see if we have the spots just right and get some measurements taken care of. So now to do a close up of this, you can see how this finished base plate and T-post are together. All we're doing is lining up the holes and driving in these self-tapping screws. It is absolutely critical that you do not over tighten or undo and redo this multiple times 
because this is aluminum and you can wear it out. So I'm on the lowest setting on my drill to make sure that there aren't any problems. And working on the edge of a table like this does make it a little bit easier. So here we have a nice straight edge. All of our hangman pieces are perfectly aligned, but our tops, some are shorter. So we've got our measurement here, and I can draw a line down the whole thing. So because not all of these are perfectly level on top, we're gonna go ahead and square these off and cut off the tops to make sure that everything is equal. We want this to be as perfect as possible. Now, I would recommend a band saw over a reciprocating saw. We didn't have that at the time, as well as having a clamp would have made this a lot easier. And it's also really helpful to not push down on the reciprocating saw blade because that will overwork the blade and gunk up the teeth with the aluminum. Our height from the base to the bottom to clear the air conditioner for our, our highest point it needs to be at least 16 and a half inches roughly. So to give some extra space between the bottom brat or the bottom cross beam and the air conditioner, we're gonna come up half an inch above that. So we need 17 inches on the bottom here, but this is two inches. We need to measure 19 inches to the top. So we did that and then we made a mark on where this needs to get tapped. So we put our tap screws right here. And if we measure from the bottom of the base plate, measure from the bottom of the base plate to the line. And in this case, it's exactly seven and three quarter inches. So now we can go to all of these and just do seven and three quarter inches, make our line, and that's where we tap in. I'm simply going to transcribe all of this over to all of the other brackets that we need to work with and drive in the cell tappers. Pushing down on these two pieces together will kind of lock them in place, making it easier. On the hangman, you have these holes here. So you wanna put that down. You're gonna have an inner strut with two holes on one side, no holes on the other. And your outer cross beam, two holes on one side, and a skinnier piece. So make sure you put the holes to the outer edge. Lock, wash, lock nut. I'm gonna put these eyelets on here. We're gonna go an inch and a half from the top. This is something we could have done when we were on the table. So by simply scribing on here exactly where these holes are gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and drill this out to make sure that we have as clean of a hole possible for this eye bolt to fit through and go ahead and fasten it on. I always recommend using blue Loctite on these as well with all of the screws and bolts being used and making sure that everything is tightened down to spec. We know that our RV is 101 inches wide in total but we have to come in a little bit in order to be in where the structure is, which makes it 100 inches. So from base to base, we wanna be right at 100 inches to the outside edge, which means that our inside edge, where our panels are gonna go, in this case, is gonna be 97 and a quarter. So because I've got this at 97 inches now, there's a sleeve that's gonna go right here in this skinnier part. I need to get this measurement. Since we want all of our cross beams to be identical, I'm gonna go ahead and scribe on these spacers as well and get them all identically cut. Each one of these and once they're all cut, they'll fit into place nicely just by sliding them in like so and pulling the two brackets apart. That way this sleeve can go into place. Now you want to follow the instructions from the manufacturer on how to get these yeah, saddles fit properly. Ones that are not on the edges. We have our saddle and we have a two lower swing arms, eight or four bolts on each side. But in our case, we're right at about 11 and a half inches from the post in order to make this work properly for this RV. Now these are almost ready to go up on the roof. There's only one last thing we need to do. A butyl tape. It's important. You peel right from here. Don't stretch it. You want to keep this paper in place. But this butyl tape, we ended up using quite a bit of it. The real goal here is to cover each hole underneath the bottom of the base plate 
That way there is no chance of water intrusion. We're also eventually going to be putting Dicora lap sealant right on the top of this. And I highly recommend using some sort of box cutter or really sharp knife. It is going to get dirty, so make sure you use something that's disposable. I'm going to hand these brackets up to Kyle here on the roof. And that way they're all ready for us to start placing. We've already marked out where everything's going to go on the roof when we first did the initial cleaning with alcohol. So we just want to make sure that we're remarking everything so nothing gets out of spec the whole time we're doing this. I'm going to go ahead and peel off the paper for the butyl. And once this goes down, it sticks very hard. So do not mess it up. And now we're going to go ahead and screw this in using these lag screws. It is important to not over tighten. And this is one of the reasons why we want to be on the frame area because it gives us something to bite into on the RV. Now it's time to start prepping the solar panels and it helps a lot to have these speed horses and 2x4s because it sits up above the saw horses so we're not scratching the frames at any point. These struts here make sure that the panels do not bounce up and down on the frame as you travel down the road. There's a little notch here in the middle and you can line it up with the center of the solar panel quite easily. You just wanna make sure that it's centered. These holes here, we oftentimes will mark them and then pull this strut off. But for this time around, we're just gonna go ahead and mark them and then go ahead and drill. But you wanna make sure you have some sort of backer. You do not want to do this any type of drilling none whatsoever on the back of the solar panel without some sort of metal backer because you will eventually slip and hit the panel and it will cost you the whole solar panel. Now this is the upper swing arm right here that we are going to also mark. There are five holes that need to be drilled out and then bolted in. Notice how I'm still using that backer. We do not want to hit the back of the cells. Just using this base plate that we had around worked really well, but I would recommend having a piece of steel or something that's much harder than aluminum to keep those cells protected. In the end, this worked out perfectly well for us. Notice that on the upper swing arm, there is one side that is sticking out, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get these five bolts into place, all just following the instructions that came from Monument Solar. and simply rinse and repeat. We have to do this to 10 solar panels. So this ends up taking quite a while, even with the two of us going on it, because there are so many holes to drill into each solar panel. But soon enough, we're all prepped with all the panels. Now this lap sealant is gonna make sure that we have even more waterproofing and that any water that hits these base plates is gonna shed around it. We don't wanna have any standing water if we can help it. The Dicor simply ensures that we have as much water protection as possible and we're going to go as far as covering every single one of these bolt heads to make sure that no water can get in. This will settle and flatten out but you want to be thorough and go through each one of them. And this chain back here is normally a cable but we had to improvise and there is a twist lock here that allows you to tighten up this whole bracket. You don't want to get these really tight before you install the panels because it will actually pull the whole post over. This cable here gives extra forward and backward support for the whole rack. That way it's evenly distributed across the entire roof. And the eyelets that are cut into the bottom of the base plates work out perfectly for this. So we have all of these up prepped for the solar panels and we leave one spot open just to make sure we have an easy spot to pull solar panels up. And that's exactly what we're ready to do. There are probably easier ways to do this, but we were working with what we had at the time. And so we had two people on the bottom lifting panels into the truck bed. And then I was up top pulling them up along this cardboard to make sure that we didn't hurt the roof. It is absolutely imperative that you do not put the corner of the solar panel on the roof. Even on residential houses, it's very easy to pop a hole into the roof or through the shingles. So you don't want to do that. And we take them to each bracket working from the farthest point to the closest point and simply slide the upper swing arm that's attached to the solar panel onto the lower swing arm that's sitting on this bracket of the crossbeam. This allows us to hold everything together. It makes it extremely difficult for the solar panel to fall off. And then we're going to use these thumb bolts that go through each lower and upper swing arm. And this allows us to tilt the solar panels and you can use this at different times of the year. We worked late into the night to make this work. We got all 10 solar panels up and we even have this little walkway here in the middle due to the two faces of the roof. So the next morning, everything's in perfect condition, ready to get wired together. And that's what it's time to do is it's time to start bringing the solar down to where the solar generators are gonna be. So it's time to lock up all of these bolts and nuts, which means we have to do a lot of tightening. 
we have a black and red all the way from the back coming all the way forward that's our home run from the back and then we have a black and red from the very front panels it's gonna go down into that hole this is a typical RV gland that you can find on Amazon. They're very common to find. And we used a simple hole in the bottom compartment of the RV. Because this is a fifth wheel, there was lots of space to use this satellite roof access channel. It's basically a dead space in a wall where you can pass cables through. Initially, the plan was to have the Apollos all the way in the front compartment of the RV. And that's why we started passing all of the solar wires through this wall into the front compartment. But then we realized it wouldn't fit. So we used this pull-out drawer that's rated for 800 pounds of weight and started stacking the Apollos with their expansion batteries all together. And this worked out beautifully. This drawer worked amazing to access the batteries and Apollos, but in the end, the customer did want to have a different setup. But we need to get this set up for the Tesla for Tesla charging. Neutral ground separated, floating neutral neutral ground bonded. We literally just go from there to there. In order to charge the Tesla, we have to bond the neutral and ground. So we're gonna go ahead and follow those instructions here inside of the Apollo. And then you'll also notice that we did a major change in where the Apollos were housed up in the front of the RV. We are currently charging this Tesla off of this entire RV solar setup that is here on this fifth wheel. You see we've got our Apollo solar generators here in the back. We have the entire RV plugged in at once. You see that going into right here. And if we come all the way to the front, you can see we're trickle charging this Tesla. And you can see it is indeed charging right there. Here's the loads, pulling 1400 watts to run the Tesla. And the air conditioner and circuit on this Apollo is running pulling about 2,000 watts. You can see that charging indicator here. And we are charging here inside the Tesla. And here is another view of how that is charging. And this is from Monument Solar, and you can use coupon code Minuteman Prep and get a discount. The fact that this has enough power to not only run the RV, including the two air conditioners and everything else in it to keep life like normal, but to be able to charge a Tesla off of this is super impressive. And it's one of the reasons why I love the Apollos so much. This kit was purchased at PoweredPortableSolar.com. This is a very fun system to have on your RV and I have now put it on my own RV and we'll have another video showing you how to do that. So if you'd like to do something similar to this, you can visit MonumentSolar.com and use coupon code Minuteman Prep and get a discount on your system. And of course, reach out to PoweredPortableSolar.com for any other systems that you need. The real question is, why pay for power when you can be your own powerhouse? And it's pretty incredible that you can do that on an RV with this setup. Be prepared. See you on the next video.